Hey guys, now from this video onwards, let's discuss Azure Durable Functions. Now, as of now, in this video, let's not talk what is Durable Function or why we use Durable Function, etc. Instead, let's understand below concepts in detail. So guys, having clear understanding of these concepts is really important. And only after we have clear understanding, we can understand Durable Functions in much better way. So, we will understand what is orchestration, then we will understand what is orchestrator function, then we will understand what is activity function and then we will understand what is state. Now guys, let's imagine we want to get some task or some work done and this task it has four steps. So again, we have one task, in that one task we have four steps. Now what is orchestration? So orchestration it means to control order and flow of steps in a task and we also track if any step has failed and we also track the response of each of the step. So again guys orchestration it means we control the order and flow of steps. And now let's try to understand it in a better way. So guys, let's imagine we have this function and responsibility of this function is to get task done. And so let's call this function as a controller function. Now guys, let's say this function that is this controller function in order to get this task done, it calls four steps. And now each of this step it is a function and now each of this function is our activity function and this function that is the function which controls the calling of this activity function this is our orchestrator function. And guys now this orchestrator function it can call these four steps that is these four activity functions either in parallel or it can call these four activity functions one after another or it can also call it such a way that let's say these first two activity functions are called and then this third and this fourth function they are waiting for some external event to occur. That means this activity function and this activity function, they will be called only after some event has occurred. So that means this orchestrator function, it decides the order or the way these activity functions are called. And again guys, in which scenario we should use this concept or why we should use this concept in real time, we will discuss in our upcoming videos. But as of now, let's just concentrate on understanding this orchestrator and then this activity function concept. And guys, finally, let us discuss what is this state. See guys, we say that this orchestrator function, it maintains the state that that means it keeps the track of state. But what is this state? So. First, orchestrator function, it keeps the order in which activity functions are called. Then it keeps the track of inputs passed to activity function. Then it keeps track of results written by each activity function. Then it also keeps track if any of activity function has failed. It also keeps track of if any of activity function is waiting for some event to occur. And so all this combined information is referred as state. So our orchestrator function keeps track of all this state. Now let's say this orchestrator function it has successfully called this activity function 1. It has successfully called this activity function 2 but let's say while calling this activity function 3 our system has crashed 
but then when our system recovers then this orchestrator function it now knows that step 1 and step 2 that is activity function 1 and activity function 2 has already been called successfully so next time onwards it will call this activity function 3 and then activity function 4 so again it is possible because this orchestrator function it maintains the state so that's it guys for this video thanks thanks for listening